Now let's train this new knowledge. I strongly recommend that you not only watch this video, but also think by yourself and try to find the best moves by yourself. It's a very good idea to pause the video sometimes and think about the position by yourself first and only after that resume the video. Of course, right now we will be focusing on the topic of this lesson, on the rules to take as a mistake and offense is the best defense. That's why we will not analyze every move and that's why I will pass opening moves without analysis. Let's start from this position. Here white played knight h4, attacking black bishop. Where will you place the bishop? Of course, we should go forward, bishop g4, attacking the queen, bishop g6 is an option, but it's a passive option, while bishop g4 is attacking the queen, that's why black has chosen this idea. White played f3, bishop h5 and g4. White is still trying to capture this bishop. And now this is another question for you. How would you play here as black? Of course, black can simply retreat to g6, but we know that offense is the best defense and that we should try to find something active first of all. That's why black played knight d5 taking white's h4 knight with his queen. Now if white takes g takes h5, it will break white's pawn structure and give black excellent um, attack against white's numerous weaknesses. And that's why instead of that white played knight g2 and black retreated bishop g6. Now here's a new challenge for white. Black is attacking white's knight c3. How can white protect it? Of course white can protect it with a bishop or with a queen somehow, but we know that offense is the best defense. So you, you should try to find the attacking move first of all. And that's why white played knight a2, attacking the bishop. Currently it's protected by the knight, but of course white can first take the knight and after that capture the bishop. That's why black retreated. And now white can attack once again, playing e4. You see that white is able to gain extra temples constantly. Black played knight b6, bishop b3, knight a6, a5. Okay, these are just simple development moves. And black played bishop b4. Okay, now black is attacking white's pawn on a5. And that's not a position when white needs to deal with it somehow. What do you think about it? Instead of thinking about black's threats, let's focus on the white's plans. What is the white's plan here? During the previous moves he expanded on the king side and probably white wants to continue his attack there. And that's why he played h4. Now black has no time for taking the a5 pawn because white will answer h5, capturing black's bishop. Black played h6, giving a free square for his bishop. Now the situation is pretty similar. The white's a5 pawn is still under attack and white still can use the rule offense is the best defense. So he just keep pushing his own plan and played g5. Ideally black would like to close the position, but here after h5 white can go knight f4 and keep attacking the bishop and also those pawns are still vulnerable, vulnerable so it's not that easy for black to keep the position closed. That's why instead of that in the game he took h takes g5 White recaptured by the bishop. Still black has no time for the a5 pawn because he has to do something about his queen. Once again you can see power of this rule of offense is the best defense. And if black just moves the queen somewhere like queen c7 or something like that, then white may continue his attack with the moves like knight f4, h5 and his threats are on the king side are pretty strong. 
Black decided to secure his position and played bishop e7. You see that defense of that pawn on a5 has been solved automatically without any extra efforts for white. White simply realized his own plan on the king side. Now he played queen d2 to protect the bishop. Black played e5, taking white center. Should white take there or not? Of course not, because to take is a mistake. If white takes there, it will help black to bring his knight on a good central square. White should not do it. That's why white played d5 instead. Black played knight c5, attacking the bishop, bishop c4, rook c8. Okay, in this position white has a lot of moves to calculate. White can take somewhere on e7, on a6, on c6, and for a weak player it would take a lot of time to consider all these options. Strong players knows that you should keep the tension and you should not take, and that's why he simply played rook d1. Black decided to release the tension and take on g5, but as we know it's very good to let an opponent to make exchange, because in this case he helps you to become more active. In this example, first white placed his queen on more active square, and then he recaptured with a pawn, gaining more space on the king side, getting new h4 square for his knight, and all in all you can see that after black took on g5, it helped white to gain more space and be become more active. Okay, black played bishop h5, knight e3, g6, covering f5 square, and here white took on c6 finally. Uh, generally we should avoid such moves, but in this position white has uh, a certain tactical reason for this move. After black recaptured, white took an a6 and go knight c4, and there is no good way for black to protect his e5 pawn and other weak pawns. Black has a couple of weak pawns right now, and he cannot protect them. If he tries rook e8, white will play knight d6, making a fork on black's rooks. That's why in this particular position, d takes c6 was a good idea for white. As we discussed before, if you can win opponent's material, then of course you can and should take. That's what happened in this game. Black answered f6, g takes, knight takes e5, and white won pawn. Rook e8. Black is attacking white's knight. And if knight goes away, black will try to grab that pawn on f3. What should white do? What do you think? Of course, white should think about attacking moves first of all, because offense is the best defense. And that's why he played knight to d7. This knight aims at the f6 square. Well, currently it just attacks the rooks, the rook of course. But if black takes an f3, then after an exchange, bishop takes, taking the rook, the rook will go somewhere, let's say rook f1. And then, finally, white will play knight f6 check, making a fork on black's king and rook. This is losing for black. That's why in the game he made another move, after knight d7 attacking the rook, black simply retreated, rook f7. Now the f3 pawn is still hanging, and what should white do about it? Of course white can protect it somehow, like in g2 or something like that, but instead we know that we should keep pushing our own plan. White was trying to occupy the f6 square, making a fog, and so we can just push this plan once again. White played rook d6, preparing knight f6 check. Black played king g7. The f3 pawn is still hanging, and still we should think about our own plan. Once again, if white wants to occupy the f6 square, then you need to ask yourself how can I realize my plan. White played e5. Now if black takes pawn with a bishop, then after knight f6, white realized his idea, now the rook is attacked, and also it interrupts connection between 
black's rook and the bishop, and thus white can grab the bishop on f3. In the actual game, black did not take an f3 with the bishop, he took with the rook. Now that's not a question for white. Should white trade the rooks or not? Of course not, because to take is a mistake. If white takes an f3, it will help black to bring the bishop into play and protect the c6 pawn and generally bring this bishop on into more active position. Instead, white can simply take that c6 pawn straight away and attack black's knight on a6. Black played knight b4, white answered rook d6. Perhaps rook c7 was more powerful, but okay, let's just continue with the game. Rook g3, king h2, rook d3. Once again, there is a possibility for white to make an exchange or not to make it. What do you think about it? Yeah, we should keep the tension. We should not take. Instead, we should try to let opponent take. That's why white played knight c5. And now if black takes on d6, White will recapture with a pawn, and this pawn will become closer to the 8th rank. And black just retreated. Now white can push the pawn forward. You see, during the whole game, white does not spend time on defense. Always, he's trying to find the way to realize his own plan, and to make attacking moves. And thus, opponent always have to defend, and has no time to realize his own ideas. Here black played bishop g4, he is attacking that pawn on e6. You already know that we need to think about attacking moves, because offense is the best defense. And by adopting this approach you can find a lot of ideas for white. White can make check on the 7th rank with one of the rooks, like rook d7 or rook f7. And another move which is even simpler is rook f4. This is a double attack on black's bishop and knight on the fourth rank. Now black is in a big trouble, in fact he's losing. Anyway, let's look the game until the end. Rook h8, king g2, bishop h3, king f2. Now the rook is hanging. Black played rook e5, taking white's knight on c5. Now of course the white's position is winning and perhaps there are a lot of ways for a win here, but white used uh, the most appropriate moves. He played rook d7 and he is just using the same idea throughout the whole game. An idea that offense is the best defense. Now black has to remove his king. King h4, oh, sorry, king h6, rook h4, check. Black cannot move the king, otherwise he'll lose the rook, that's why he has to play rook h5. You see that White solved the problem of defense of his c5 knight without making any defensive moves. Black had to use his rook for defensive purpose. White exchanged the rooks and then took the pawn. Black played rook c8, attacking that knight on c5. What should White do about it? Of course White shouldn't retreat. White can push e7 and realize his plan. White wants to promote his e-pawn and he is very close to this goal. Black played knight c6 trying to attack the rook and now after rook a6 black resigned and the next move white will take the knight deflecting the rook and that will promote a new queen. We have just analyzed a quite amazing game between two very strong grandmasters. The white player made a lot of sudden and very powerful moves. And what's the most important is that we were able to reveal the secrets of these guys. How can they find such powerful moves? As you can see, when you know the secrets of strong players, everything becomes pretty simple. Although we went through this game very quickly, I'm sure you were able to guess a lot of moves. If this is the case, Sam, please accept my congratulations. It means that you are very close to the level of top grandmasters. <laughs> well, okay, okay, I'm kidding, but 
nevertheless, I'm sure that if you adopt just these two techniques, it will improve your game quite a lot. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.